Okay, so it is time now to move and take a plunge into the first modality that we want to cover, which is going to be projection radiography. So, uh, like I said, whatever we have covered so far, we have covered the physics, mostly of X-ray physics, right? Uh, but I also warned you that some, if you take just the interactions of photons, even if it is higher energy, the interactions are similar and therefore, when we get to uh, PET and spec the nuclear medicine, we will only have a, a cursory review and some, some, some aspects that are speciality to radioactivity that we ignored so far that will be covered there. Otherwise, the style of coverage is going to be, we covered the X-ray based physics so far. Now, we will start with projection radiography and uh, subsequently uh, X-ray CT. So, these two we will cover. So, we had the physics, then how are we planning to cover it? Oh, from physics, we want to go to instrumentation. From instrumentation, we want to go to image formation. From image formation, we want to go to image quality. Okay. So, with that, we will start projection radiography. By now, you should be able to understand technically what is meant by projection radiography. Projection is collapsing the dimension, right? So, in our case, we are going to talk about a 3D volume that is collapsed, that is projected to a, a 2D plane. That is what we call as projection. Radiography. So, now you know what is radio, ionizing radiation, radiation, right? So, we want to talk about projection. Radiography is an image, drawing, right? So, so in projection radiography, we are going to talk about X-ray projection radiography. We say projection radiography, but uh, what is meant here, what it implies is we are go going to talk about X-ray projection radiography. That is what happens if I send X-rays through this 3D volume. How can I project this onto the 2D, get a graph of based on the radi radi radio um, radiation that we are sending in. So, um, Immediately when we talk about it, we have used several examples. <coughs> so, what is going to be our goal here? Our goal is not going to be cover one particular system, application. Our goal is to cover the underlying concept, the underlying instrumentation that is there that exploits the first principles of the interaction that we talked about, uh, the physics that we understood. So, immediately when we say what are the examples, you would have probably heard say chest x-ray which is an example that I kind of used very routinely because likelihood that you would have seen that system, you would have been part of the imaging process, you would have gone taken a chest x-ray at some point of time. But that, that, that is one of the predominant ones that you may be able to relate. But is there others that ring a bell to you? Have you, you know the other very commonly used system. So, this is very wide ranging. Each one is uh, specific depending on the context, but all of them are having the same underlying principle that it is exploiting, which is what we will cover here, right? So, chest x-ray, then oh, mammography, right? At least uh, uh, women, now there is a lot more uh, awareness, right? For uh, women breast cancer. So, do mammography. So, you would have been Heard, hearing that term, even though it does not say it is x-ray based, you would have heard it as mammography, but essentially it is, you know, it is a projection x-ray uh, modality. Then, angio, right, you would have heard this term angio heart, they want to see the vessel, so there is a block, they do, do why do not you do a angiography, right. So, that also, of course, there are CT versions of it, but essentially it is also exploiting um, projection radiography also is there for quick uh, uh, view. Then, so cardio, cancer, right, breast mammography, lung infection, all of these are very common you would have heard, okay. Uh, of course, there is uh, fluoroscopy that is also very common. So, what is the commonality? When we say X-ray projection radiography systems, all of this, the output is an image, okay. So, what are the properties? Well, uh, 
there are there are, there are different aspects right when we talked about properties as in what are the what, what, what are the common underlying um, features of these systems right we talked about some image quality aspect some radiation I mean, safety aspect right those are the uh, general requirements if you review our introduction general requirements uh, we we did give out some certain uh, common general requirements irrespective of the medical imaging modality so here we want to specific be more specific about x ray projection radiography system what are the general properties of that it has good resolution in fact high resolution this is something that we covered just recently with respect to dose so you have to have low dose you cannot dose the patient to get good image quality right so low dose so what is the what is the idea of what does this low represent ah we are talking about about 30 millirads right so which is essentially about 1 10th of your annual background exposure that you anyway get so it's not it's not so the the cost of doing this imaging right is way less compared to the benefit that you derive cost could be safety issue not the the rupees or dollars right so low dose so low dose is good right um, then large coverage area what do we mean by example of chest x ray a standard chest x ray as this uh, right you would have seen your doctor uh, put it under the light and see and tell so that there is a common size that it comes right so you are able to take one shot of the chest so it's a large coverage area i mean it is all relative it's not whole body but it's still significant portion that you can get with a very short exposure 0.1 second so that is why i said when you go to a if you had been to a typical chest x ray there is more time spent to make you stand in position and uh, he will ask you instruct don't you know uh, stay still and uh, all the other things the actual imaging after the technician goes to his room and says done right i mean it's 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 like that so it's so instantaneous so 0.1 second is actually the exposure exposure you now you probably know what it means right you send the x rays through it goes through the body comes to the other side it gets detected how much x radiation you are exposed to right the ionizing cap is very small you are sending it only for 0.1 second so in that sense it is quick right so these are the desirable properties only disadvantages is projection what do we mean by projection your depth resolution is lost ah now i use this term hopefully you are able to recognize depth resolution is lost what does it mean oh resolution resolution is nothing but how am i able to resolve two objects right we talked about temporal resolution spectral resolution spatial resolution this is spatial resolution bus on the third dimension which is your depth so in projection radiography your depth resolution is lost what does it mean oh i cannot tell the separation between the front and the back because i'm collapsing the dimension into the plane of the wall so that is a uh, disadvantage despite that because of the other desirable features that you see here properties this is a staple it's heavily used right very limited uh, applications are actually uh, listed here you, you i mean i'm sure one of the other things that you are very familiar you break a bone or you suspect breaking a bone a quick thing is they'll ask you to go for an x ray right then that can tell whether you have a fracture or not so these are very commonly used uh, applications um so it is important we need to not worry too much about the customization for application but there is a common instrumentation that goes behind these systems so that is what we will what is a common instrumentation what does it capture of the physics then the imaging and then the quality aspects combining the um physics and the imaging equations how does the quality okay so uh, we'll get into projection radiography instrumentation first later we will do image formation after we do the image formation we will talk about image quality so within instrumentation as well we will cover only the generic 
instrumentation. We will not really cover the custom like if mammography there are certain uh, customizations that are done. If it is chest x-ray it is something else. So, we will not worry about the fine tuning. We will cover about the major instrumentation components. So, you have your x-ray tube, you have some filtration restrictions, compensation contrast agents and then film screen detector. In fact, we will do film screen detector. Digital x-ray is something that is now very common and therefore, we will attempt to cover this if time permits. Okay. Uh, image formation. So, we will get to that when we get to image formation. Finally, image quality. All of these terms you would have seen, okay. but we will get to that when we when we complete these. So, let us take a jump into the instrumentation. So, when I talk about instrumentation, what instrumentation I am talking about? I am talking about the imaging system instrumentation. System is the complete part. What do I mean by complete part? In our case, we are going to have a source that is generating the x-ray and then a patient is standing or you know, lying or whatever, but then we are talking about through transmission. So, there is a source which generates x-ray, x-ray is sent into the body and we will have to have a, a detection behind the body. So, it is going through the body. So, this is a through transmission setup that we are going to cover. Okay. So, that means what are the basic components, a general sketch, you should have a source side, you have a patient, you should have the detector side. These are the uh, basic big picture. right? So, you will have the source side, you will have the patient and then the detector side. So, this is a true transmission setup. Okay. Um, so, now what we will do is we will cover in the same order, at least we will cover, talk about the source first and then about uh, whatever you see here, right, some add-ons and then we will in fact talk the imaging aspect we will cover later, but from an instrumentation point of view, you know, is there something to instrument in a patient, <laughs> right, or to do with the patient, based on the patient that we will cover and then of course, we will talk about the detector side of it. So, this is the order in which we will go. So, let us start with the x-ray tube. In fact, with the x-ray tube, right, given that we covered the physics already, a sketch alone tells what it is supposed to do, okay. A sketch here and of course, a photography. This is a photo of a typical x-ray tube, just so that you can appreciate that it is having a glass housing, so you can see what is there inside, right. Uh, the details of which are captured here. Okay, so, what do you see? The moment you say x-ray tube configuration, get back to your physics, when we talked about uh, electromagnetic ionizing radiation, particulate interactions, we talked about, oh, we are interested in using this particulate, right, to generate x-ray in x-ray tube. So, we gave already some hints about the working principle of x-ray tube. What you see here is a, a more detailed uh, version of how that is executed. Okay. So, if you recall what we talked about that time is we just said, oh, there is this uh, particulate, specific particulate that we were interested is in electron. So, you have an electron, that electron is accelerated across with a voltage drop and it goes, hits the anode and you have all these radiative collision, right? Remember all the physics of interaction of particulate with material that we covered. Fine, that is what is the big picture. So, now the question is, okay, where did this electron come from, right? You said, oh, we accelerate this electron and we defined kilo electron volt, right? So, we had electron that is going, the kinetic energy is getting deposited there. So, half mv square, all this we did. So, where does this electron come from? See, that is a detail, right? And that comes from here. You have a, what we call as a filament circuit. What is a filament circuit? So, this is the cathode assembly. So, on this side. So, so essentially this filament circuit helps you to create the electrons, generate the electrons. Then you have some details here, right? So, the once the electron is generated, it's you still see some C kind of uh, structure here. 
SMC that is trying to focus, right? So, you do not want the electron to go everywhere. You want to channel the electron so that it goes and hits the anode. Ah, this we studied. Once the kinetic energy after it is accelerated, it interacts with the material, radiative, collision, all this the Bramstraw lung that we covered. So, here there are two pieces the, of interest. One is the filament circuit that is going to help you create the electrons. Electron cloud is going to be created and of course, there is this focusing part which is going to keep the electrons ready so that it can go directly hit the anode at a desired location. Okay, so that was one detail. The second detail, we, we said it but we will flesh it. So, electrons are available here. So, the moment you apply a voltage, right, the electrons will move. That is what that part we covered. But what we did not cover is, oh, we have radiative and coal, right, we, we talked about uh, heating, Bramstra lung, right. So, here we just that time told there is an anode, but you see there is an anode assembly. Okay, so we need to shed some light on what is there and why it is there. High voltage is not a big deal. We talked about we are going to supply high voltage to this anode. That potential drop is going to make this electron right move and attain kinetic energy and hit right. So rear. So this this schematic vividly represents what are the components that are there in the X-ray tube and uh, broadly you have three aspects. One is the cathode assembly, the other is the material itself where the physics happens to create X-ray and then the anode assembly that uh, makes sure that uh, the, the, the tube uh, is usable and uh, this can be reliably produced, the, the interactions can be controlled. Okay. Of course, there is a glass housing so that it is easy to handle and it does some some uh, role in in some of the aspects of filtering that we will talk about so the film filament right the filament circuit that i talked about what does it do it controls essentially the tube current tube so you have a x ray tube so there is a current that is flowing through right you have the electrons and the electrons are going to flow across a voltage so there is a current so the filament that is there does two things I mean, essentially it controls the tube current, but in order to control the tube current, when do you have tube current? Oh, you need to have electrons. Only then after you apply a voltage from cathode to anode, the electrons will move, produce current, right? So, that means the filament role is, how does it control the tube current? Oh, there is this electron. So, the amount of electrons that are going to be generated here that are ready, right? So, that once the potential is applied, it can move. That is controlled by the filament circuit that you say, filament circuit. So, essentially the uh, filament circuit itself, typically you run through a 3 to 5 amperes of current at about 6 to 12 volts. But what is happening is the thin thorium tungsten wire. So, that is through which the filament is made of thoriated tungsten wire. So, that is a very thin material of it is there. And when you pass this current at this voltage, due to the resistance of the wire, right, the, the thoriated tungsten wire, there is a drop in energy, so that it gets heated up, right. So, you have what is called as thermionic emission, so ions due to thermal energy, right. So, your heat is creating ions and that is emitted out, so that you, it gives you free electrons, so which is called as thermionic emission. So, you use this thermionic emission to get the electrons. So, once you apply this, vary this, you can have the electrons ready, free electrons that are just there on the cathode side, it is created. Now, the question is, I want to send it to the anode. So, before we do that, we have the focusing cup. So, in the cathode, you have a filament that creates this uh, free electrons using thermionic emission and it has, it has its own circuitry for that and then you have a focusing cup. Remember the C structure that I showed you is a focusing cup. So, the focusing cup helps all this electron cloud to, right, it, it allows this electron to go in the direction that you want straight into the anode surface where you want to hit it. So, typically it is uh, focused to the edge, bottom edge. 
so that is your cathode and focusing cup then what happens to your uh, so you have what is called as primed so at this end of this step we say the x ray tube is primed so that the electrons are all ready right now you need to give it some kinetic energy so that it can go bombard and give you x rays so when you want to do that anode is switched to high potential what is we mean by high potential somewhere between 30 and 150 kilo volt p what is this p that is your peak so that is the 30 to 150 kilo volt peak volt that's what you apply right so this again it has its own circuitry you can get this voltage from the line right uh, and then uh, increase it amplify it rectify it and then you can get so uh, you 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 apply a very high voltage peak voltage in the order of 130 130 to 150 kilo volts so when you apply that this part you 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 know from the physics so you have a anode typically made of tungsten right then you have your bramstra lung you have your um, you know heat generation colloid right so look at this only 1% produce produces 1% produces bramstra lung 99% is heating so clearly if you have this 99% heating lot of heat is generated so if you have a glass casing so much of heat is generated what is going to happen it's just going to burst right it's not sustainable so you have to cool it so in order to cool it that is where your anode assembly you saw a stator and there was so a rotation in fact there was a marking in the previous slide right rotator so essentially what happens is this anode is not just a, a square that static it will rotate right it will rotate so that it's always the electron is going to come and impede here so the thickness is going to be the, the electron has to go through the thickness right so it is going to be like this so it is going to rotate in this direction so we call this spin set 3200 to 3000 so there are even little more rpms available so it depend i mean that's a detail essentially what does it do it dissipates heat by spinning fast so that you don't get hit the same location again and again also right so you you have the spin mechanism that's what the rotor is for so with respect to x ray tube these are the details that we need to know where we can relate the physics of how x ray is generated with the components that are there in x ray tube to enable that physics this is all we will we will cover right uh again uh, the last but not least when you, it's all housed right so this is a glass housing and there is a vacuum in between so now the details are fine so this is what the construction of a x ray tube is so now getting to the operational detail because we want to use this for imaging system what are the operational details we need to know from the instrumentation oh how much x ray to come out right who has control how do you control that right that is important question how long you want to send the x rays because i don't want to fry the patient right send bombard him with x rays so how 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 long and is there a way to control that in the x ray tube okay so typically what we have is oh we can apply this voltage because only when you apply the voltage the electrons come and hit and x rays come out right so if the electrons don't have kinetic energy it is not going to create x ray so if i have to switch off the x ray all i need to do is not apply this voltage not drive this electrons to come and hit so that is one way of thinking about it so okay you know kilo volt peak is applied for a short duration how is that short duration so you can apply using a fixed timer so you can have a control system i mean you can have a uh silicon con controlled rectifier on off switch right you could you can control that and you can have a very good clock that that has a good precision to uh, start and stop the application of this voltage that is one way to do it another way to do it is well i am not in okay starting and stopping is good right i can i know that so when you when you have a, a timer 
I can say open the X-ray, right? Apply this voltage for point uh, one second, just to use the same number that we, we used before. Point one second. What happens if it is? We'll pretend that it's all perfect. Point one second, it does, but there is going to be some latency, right? Or because of wear and tear usage, maybe for the same point one second, the amount of X-ray that comes uh, is not same. Either it is slightly more or less, depending on how you, you did it, right? So you don't want that to be a parameter. You want to be, be extra cautious. You want to be safe because the patient safety is involved. So I better be extra cautious. What I can do is I could have a, a automatic exposure control. What if this timing circuit fails? Instead of point one second, somehow the uh, rectifier got uh, 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 you know dysfunctional. Instead of point one second, it goes to one second. It's still small time. You won't know, right? One second, ten seconds. Then you are essentially frying the you are bombarding the patient with so much X radiation, right? You cannot do that. So what we could do is automatic exposure control. So now recall the definition of exposure. Oh, we have air amount of ionization that happens in a controlled volume of air, right? We talked about that as a exposure, the ionizing capability, right? So we so here what we can do is we could have that air chamber, right? So you could still have that. So you can have a five mm thick ionizing chamber that's kept along with the patient, right? So between your exposure, so you could while you think this is what you're exposing the patient, you have this calibration, you have this automatic exposure that is besides the patient and that kind of gets a live reading of what is the ion exposure that is coming. So if the exposure is high, then it can trigger a shutting down. So that is based on automatic exposure control. So you can control this based on measuring the exposure simultaneously when the patient is dosed. And that is uh, even better, right? Because now you know, now you're not relying on just the timing. You are actually measuring and saying, okay, this is more than what this patient needs to be exposed. And so you shut it out. So that is another way to do it. So that is one control. The other control is tube current. So we talked about this tube current. Tube current is important, right? Because uh, see, this, this uh, electrons that are flowing in the tube, right? That is going gaining some energy and heating and X-rays are coming out. So to control this tube current is important. How is this controlled? There are two aspects. One is the filament current. Why? Because the filament current creates the electrons that are ready now, right? During priming. So the number of free electrons that are available to charge to, right? Available to accelerate and share their kinetic energy with the anode to create X-rays. That is controlled, right? Tube current that can be controlled by playing with the filament current, right? Because that creates the electrons available. And then of course, your peak killer electron volts. So these two can be used to control the, so clearly if you want to produce the X-rays, it has to do with the kilo electrons. So how many electrons, what energy it is coming and hitting, the acceleration. So kilo electron, the voltage drop and the filament control, fi filament current which controls the free electrons available to gain this kinetic energy, both dictate your tube current. So exposure is your tube current times how much time it is open. So milliampers, amp milliampers is the current uh, units, right? Times the exposure. Exposure time is milliampere second. So this is the reported, so MAS is an important quantity. So the doctors typically or whoever is doing the data acquisition, right? They have a, a important role. So they control this MAS. So some typically in the control panel, they have a control over MAS, tube current, okay? And timing. So they can fix one or the other. Clear? Good. So that is with respect to X-ray tube. So now what we will do is, we finished X-ray tube configuration. We will quickly move towards filtration and restriction of X-ray photons. So now what we have done is, oh, first part I know, we have created this X-ray. So when I say X-ray, just to tease you, 
what is coming out oh uh, yeah anode is doing and the interaction takes place and bramstra lung right so that remember that curve right the energy increases right then there are a lot of photons with certain energy and then it drops so the highest the k peak kilo volts kvp that you applied right typically there you won't get photons with that energy right so you are going to have this hill kind of shape so that is your spectral that is coming out polyenergetic okay so you have polyenergetic x ray spectrum coming due to your bramstra lung now the question is x ray has done its x ray tube has done its job but uh, do we want to send that to the patient directly or is there any other physics that aspects that we covered in the physics that we need to pay attention to so filtration what do we mean by filtration oh i have the spectrum that is coming out filter means i have to uh, you know take out something filter out something here what does that mean filter out what x ray photons at certain energy level so before we make a intuitive explanation for this even before covering that the need for that should should come to you naturally so what is the need oh i have this x ray spectrum that is coming in can i just send it through the body so imaging systems what do we want or oh, we want signal and noise these are these are the, what is our signal the signal is photoelectric effect you want to maximize the interaction is there a relationship with the energy and interaction yes we already said oh if it is too little an energy right it will probably get absorbed in the material that it is passing through so we want through transmission so if you send low energy right x rays with the lower energy it will probably get absorbed in the body which is very good right it's interacting but then if it is completely absorbed i won't get anything on the other side if i say so say if i spend low energy that means everything will get absorbed here nothing will come out on the other side so i won't be able to catch and say oh there is a differential attenuation that is distributed like that everywhere i won't get any signal right every location i won't get any signal because everything is inside the body it is not coming out through the other side so that's not in fact you end up dosing the patient unnecessarily or the other extreme when you send the energy high energy oh it doesn't interact remember our crude analogy with all the energy i go i just don't interact with i'll push everybody and come through the other side so it will come so you will be able to collect those uh, x ray photons that is coming through the same energy so number of photons that you sent pretty much you will receive the same number of photons there won't be any attenuation right so i won't be able to tell about your material so you need filtration of course we'll talk about restriction before doing this we know oh we cannot send the, the x ray spectrum with all the energies because that is not conducive for imaging perspective so we need to pick a range of energy where we can maximize photoelectric effect and have enough signal to have a signal to noise ratio that is appreciable that can give you contrast okay so uh, low energy x rays will be absorbed by the body without providing diagnostic information this is what we we know before so what does filtration do so filtration is the process of absorbing this low energy before they enter the patient so x ray tube is sending out but before that can reach your body i want to make sure i have some filters in place so that i can take out all this low energy x rays it is better that this material that we place the filter that we place absorbs the low energy you dose the material who cares you don't want to dose the patient right so you have a material that will take all the low uh, energy x rays and allow only the x ray energy that is conducive for the tissue property so that you can get more signal and less noise right so uh, before we go into the specific filters there are some inherent filtering also that is happening that is without uh, that is the x ray tube itself right so that is within the anode and also the glass housing this within the anode 
we we talked about it before i will show the plot you will vividly appreciate the shape of the plot right the x ray spectrum that is coming is like a hill already that time we mentioned oh the energies that are in the you know the lower end they are generated but the anode itself absorbs it and so it doesn't come out of the x ray tube we mentioned it that time but now uh, probably you can uh, uh, you know uh, convince yourself that yes we, we 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 the hill shape was explained at least on the lower end there was a loss was explained due to inherent right the other is glass housing what is the glass housing you have why is the glass housing uh, acting as a inherent filter oh because see you are talking about high uh, you have tungstens you have thermionic so you have lot of heat that is generated so some amount of vaporization happens of this material right so vaporization happens so it comes and because glass is there it come and deposit on the glass so over time what happens is this the, the, there is a coating so there is already a coating on the glass but over time also your um um you know vaporization those allow a thin coating of tungsten to uh, come and form a layer and so what happens oh if the x ray is generated it has to now pass through this uh, material before it comes out of the x ray tube the glass so low energies may be, they don't have they will get absorbed there only okay so glass housing and within anode they act as a inherent filtering but that is not in our control i mean it happens over time it does it uh, but you are not proactively doing anything to it what we proactively do is add a additional filter so how do i uh, what is happening all i need to do is i want a material to interact with this x ray energy and get absorbed right so what you can do is aluminum is a very commonly used material for this filtering purpose in fact it is so common that even if you use another material you will report the uh, thickness of the material see material when you say aluminum you say you know the material so now the only aspect that determines your attenuation what is that e power minus mu delta x so thickness and the material property your mu together they determine the amount of attenuation so if i want to attenuate the signal right Ro go recall our uh, explanation on half value layer thickness and so on right so that means i want a material which can absorb the x ray energy that is coming out on the lower end and when you mean by attenuate completely absorb and attenuate completely so that the other side it doesn't come through it has to have minus mu delta x so when i say a material it has a mu now the only thing is delta x so that is your measure in thickness so equivalent thickness is always reported so aluminum by far is the common so 1 2 mm thick aluminum sheets are kept in front of the x ray tube to absorb the low energy if you don't want to use aluminum say for example sometimes copper is used if you want to use copper that is fine you can get the equivalent thickness of copper right because the density the mu is different for copper and therefore if it is less than aluminum you will have a thicker copper if it is greater than aluminum you will have a thinner copper but the idea is you want to filter out so but you report it in terms of equivalent aluminum thickness okay so this is a very common way of doing it so the concept is very simple e power minus mu delta x that's all so if i know my mu whether it is copper or aluminum or whatever material if i want my delta x needs to be changed so that i can have how much filtering i want if i want 90% of that energy to go down you know what is your half value layer calculation right 0.6935 so you know the material you can calculate how much uh, uh, thickness is required before it goes down by 50% so you can then say okay i want 90% to go so come up with the equivalent thickness okay so that will be uh, used here um that is so much for uh, filtration in the process what happens i just want to 
uh, spend uh, three seconds on this uh, because you know this by now. First time I showed you beam hardening was in the artifact. I said this is a little difficult to understand for now. Motion artifact is easy. Uh, detector going bad is easy. Ring artifact is easy. There was a beam hardening artifact. I said uh, maybe you, I'll I'll talk about this when we get there. Maybe you will be able to explain this yourself. To top it, the previous lecture we talked about beam softening. So can you now tell to yourself what is beam hardening? What do you expect beam hardening to be? Oh, so I have beam, which is the X-ray energy that is going in, right? That the hill that we talked about. So now what have you done because of filtering? I'm basically taking out the lower end of the spectrum, right? I am taking the lower end of the spectrum. So now what will happen to the mean energy that is coming out? So if you have the hill, there is a mean value, right? If I preferentially take the low side, now I take the mean, what is going to happen? The mean energy level is going to be higher than, than before, right? Because the low energy photons are removed. So you have so many photons, but all of them are on the higher energy side. So the average of that is going to be greater than when you had low and high and having an average. It's going to be skewed, right? So you're going to have higher. So that means beam energy is increased. The average beam energy of the spectrum that is coming out after filtration is increased, hardened, right? When it was decreasing, where did it decrease? It is called beam softening. Go check back where we talked about beam softening. It was last lecture or the previous one. The energy was reduced. The average energy was reduced. It was moving towards the left. That was softening. This is hardening. Okay. So this can happen not just by the filter that you are putting. It happens, it could happen also within the body. So if you have layers where it suddenly you have a layer. Uh, that absorbs way more than right the neighbor or the front or back right neighbor in the depth direction or front or back then what is going to happen ah there is going to be a beam hardening so you are sending the spectrum i hit a very high uh, so i have a uh, just for argument okay not natural just for argument so I, Somebody, there is a bullet, there is an implant, there is a metal, something is there, right? So, if I go, there is a rapid, right? There is a, going to be a, a different, there is going to be more absorption. And so, the spectrum that is in front of that metal and the, the spectrum that is coming out of the metal to probe through the other tissues are different, right? The beam is hardened after going through that, that material, right? So, you could get beam hardening artifact because of these things. Uh, okay, so, you know where it is coming from. It is due to filtration effect. We have mostly listed filtration from the outside, but it can also happen inside depending on the material. Okay, so, so much is good. So, this is fine for uh, filtration with respect to energy. What is restriction? Oh, I go for a chest x-ray, right? I go for a chest x-ray. I better get only my chest exposed. I don't want my head, right, arms, legs. Why should that get exposed? Why should I do? I'm not interested in imaging that. Why should give dose to that? So, restriction is going to be essentially just uh, uh, before going to restriction, let's just complete this. I, I told visually just to spoil your <laughs> imagination, right? This is the same thing that we saw before the hill. What is new in this is, the previous time we saw this hill, we had different kilo electron volts, so there were several hills, but each one was for different applied voltage. Whereas here you see different hills, not because of that. You see different hills or the spectrum after each process that we have covered so far. So this is your theoretical, Bramstraw lung creates X-rays within the anode starting from zero energy till whatever maximum you have applied kilo electron volt, right? So, 
However, because so this is what is actually generated. However, before it can leave the anode, the low energy, right? These things are absorbed by the anode itself, right? So progressively, what is leaving the anode is not having low energy. In fact, number of photons with low energy is less, and only X-ray photons that have higher energies are leaving the anode, right? So this is at the anode. But then, after anode, we talked about internal filtering, right? So you have the X-ray tube. So this is the one that is leaving the tube. So this already less or lower energies are filtered due to the intrinsic factors, right? So this is the shape of the uh, energy spectra that is coming out. Now we have added the filter. Okay, so when we added the filter, again we have shaved off, filtered off low energy. So we are preferentially giving only from 30. It starts with there about 20, 30. It goes up and then it goes down. And then <laughs> this is a leaving body. So that means it is going into the body. This is the spectrum that is after the filtration. The spectrum is going inside the body. Inside the body, obviously, we are interested in attenuation, right? Interaction. We are talking about a mu. If it is completely zero, then there is no use. That is the whole idea. We try to remove the low energy. We need to get a spectrum outside the body. Otherwise, everything is lost inside the body. So once we sent 30 to uh, Actually, 100 is just for writing purposes, but there are very less photons, right? So, when you have 30 to 100 kilo electron distribution that is sent, what is leaving the body? Only this is leaving the body, about 50 to 100, right? So, all of, so you can see there is a differential attenuation that is what is exploited to see in the body. So, we have different mu's. In different regions, different tissues. So I send this spectrum, it leaves that spectrum. So you get some signal in these energies. So based on this, we need to talk about what was the attenuation distribution in the body. So you see the energy, how it is changing. So that is why I said this plot is a very important plot because it kind of tells the, the, the summary of what is the signal what is the signal quantity and the, the range that you are talking about in X-ray physics for imaging purpose, okay. Fine. So, now we will just quickly talk about restriction. Restriction is essentially to, all this is fine with respect to energy and how it goes in. The filtration is fine. But then if I go for a chest X-ray, I better send the X-ray only through the chest. What is the point in sending through the head or arms or legs, right? That is the logic. So, what can you do to restrict it? The same logic. Same logic is, so for example, I'll, I'll, let me try this. I don't know how well it will come. I have a torch, right? So, so okay. So, I don't know how clear it is. But then, uh, okay. So, let me try this, right? So, I get a, sh so I have a field of view, right? I am trying to, uh, hit my pocket, right? I want to hit my pocket or more microphone, right? I want to do this. But then microphone is so small. Why should I hit everywhere else? So what I can do? I can, right? Filter everything out. But then have a small opening. I have a small opening that will exactly allow me to shed light on the microphone only, right? Why should I illuminate? The field of view from this is wider, right? It is wider than the microphone that I want to uh, illuminate. So why should I illuminate the other regions? What I can do is restrict it. So I can attenuate the other regions 
and have a small opening so that only the field of view is illuminated right so it didn't it doesn't come out well here um um be, 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 because it's uh, so usually i do this in the class we have a overhead project you have a projector so it is actually a through transmission so i could introduce try this play with this uh but unfortunately here i have a, a camera system uh it's not through transmission so when i try to do this you know my object is blocking the camera side of it the detector is on the front side right so uh that, so it's but i i guess you can this fairly intuitive that uh, you can try it yourself as well you can try it yourself as well to get the big picture okay so essentially what we talked about is x ray tube it is coming out usually it comes like a cone right uh, all directions source is a small region so when it comes out it 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 opens up in all directions like this so it will be like a cone that when it comes out so you can have a diaphragm beam restrictor what is a diaphragm beam restrictor essential example that i showed you can have a, a lead or whatever sheet where you have a small opening so rest of the places it will get absorbed only the opening will allow the restricted field of view so this would be your field of view otherwise now by introducing this i have a small opening only the field of view is restricted the rest of the places it will be absorbed right so that is that is very simple straight forward but the challenge or the limitation is you can have only one size right is very custom like as you could have a, a cone beam restrictor so you could have a, a a cone shaped right so you can move this front or back so it has some advantage compared to diaphragm but still uh, the most popular one is your collimator beam restrictor you have two of them so you can actually adjust the slit size the opening and you can also adjust the front back so that you can change the field of view right uh, more uh, in a more flexible fashion the concept is same again your this aperture is opening the rest of the material will absorb and not allowed to go so the the opening is fixed here here you have opening that can be uh, adjusted not only that you have two of them that gives you little more flexibility so i can in a graded fashion i can do right so this gives you little more flexibility by far this is the most common uh, restrictor right collimator so this term collimator we did briefly mention but we'll talk about this even more when we talk about the detector side of it collimator means it's call it's sending in one direction it 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 gives you uh the direction the field of view right where you want it is able to direct it in that direction so um we'll stop here uh we have covered filtration and restriction the next part is going to be your source side is almost done right x-ray tube filter so you are ready now to send this to the exact field of view you want with the exact energy that is likely to give you a good interaction and good signal we are ready now is there anything to do with the patient or can we just talk about detector right we are talking about instrumentation so there is one little step that you can still do before you get to the detector details with respect to customizing it for the patient which is what we will do so customizing it for the patient the instrumentation that is used to customize based on the patient and the detector side we will cover in the next lecture so far we have covered the instrumentation on the source subsystem the next lecture we will cover the remaining part and that will complete the instrumentation aspect that we wanted to cover thank you